So I'm not stuck just seeing the exact coded passage. I can see additional context here on that slider bar. Now, um, we're going to make a little table of how the schools dealt with gender and race codes. We just want a simple count, and I'm going to show you the most complicated uh, report there is. It's basically a pivot table for you Excel users out there. I'm going to compare data. X is across. Y is down of this table. So I'm going to have schools down. So for down, I'm going to go to another column. I'm going to have the different schools. That's site. Yep. And then across, I'm going to have my codes. And let's just do a count. And we'll include a total. And I'll show you what this report looks like. There we go. Each of the schools down and how many rows, basically, attached to each school. So I could see that Stony Brook seems to be a lot more worried about these things than um, these other ones. And here are the codes. You'll notice these numbers are in blue unless they're in black, which don't do anything. But the blues are actually hyperlinks. So if I want to see these three codes from UW-Madison, I just click the three, and those three pop up. I'm going to go back so that I can have all that data still back there. And I can open this in its own window and keep it around. Open in a window. Just kind of, I can use that later to guide me through the data. And I'm going to exit that report. That's called the Data Comparison Report, and you get to it through your Compare Data button, or the Compare Data, the Data Comparison Table um, menu choice up here. That's really one of TAMS's most complicated, but also very powerful reports. And it's both a report in terms of any papers you want to write, but it's also a control panel to accessing the data. So I could see, for example, the 11 codes that are gender, population gender, boom. I just click it like that. And again, I can always get back to wherever I was through that. Let me fold that up a little bit. Um, I can export all of this data also. And TAMS has a very complicated and very powerful data export function. I collect click on the rows I want. I can also rearrange the rows, drag them up and down, get them in the order you want. I can figure out how I want to export them. I can control what you want between columns and between roll rows. This is smart. You can use things like um, regex, regular expression, uh, escape characters there. And uh, I can either do adjust the selected records, the selected records being the ones showing right here, or if I undo that, it's all the records, I can put it on the clipboard or save it to a file. And so it's a quite powerful data export tool. Um, TAMS also, uh, if there was an uh, audio file, I could listen to that audio file associated to just this row here. Um, if uh, this was a PDF file. I could view the PDF page here. Uh, if this was a PDF, you'd get kind of a um, sort of ancillary uh, information up here. So that gives you kind of um, sm a small sense of what TAMS can do. Let me, let me just say a few more things about this results window. As you can see, you can do very complex selections. You can select additional things from the general pool of results. You can remove things from this current selection. You can reverse the selection. Or you can always go back to everything just by clicking Select All. All right, so now I have all 330 of my 330 rows showing here in the window. So there's what's visible and what is really there. To get back to see the original passage, so let's say I want to see this in the original, I just double click it and it will open the window and take me to that spot. I also have here the ability to mark and then recode rows. So I can click through here 
and then using the mark command kind of indicate that I'm interested in this row, this row, and this row. And I've marked them. I put a little and that puts a little plus there. And I, I did it through the keyboard, which is Apple Shift M. And I, I can go to recode. And recode means it'll go to th those places in the document and change the code that's there to another code that you indicate. How does that look like? Well, you can either just pick something off the menu or fill in a new code to recode, and it will then go to your source documents and mess them up. Very powerful, very dangerous. You can group data. So rather than seeing this giant mess, now obviously I can come here to my select sort and sort it. That's nice. But I can also group it. What does group mean? Group column. It means I have an outline. Here are the codes. And if I want to see all the financial information, I can just go here. And that's the only one that had financial information in my uh, set. To switch back and forth between the table and this kind of outline view, you have that little control there. Other things here in the results menu, um, in addition to um, there's reports, there's ways of dealing with sets. So you could define two or three codes together as a set and then select all things that have that code set. By the way, there's also file sets. There's also value sets, which is kind of an abstraction of files or code sets that could work with any column. And result sets, which are just arbitrary collections of results. You can name results and get back to them. All right. Uh, collapse up and collapse down. This is a way of selecting just the first row or second row of matching items in a column. It's very good for like finding out how many documents deal with gender, period. Just an example of how you would do that. Just to show you, again, um, we'll look for gender. Select. Now, here are all the gender documents. I'm going to go to the sites. I'm going to sort those quickly. Now, uh, I want to know how many schools and Oh, let's get rid of the documents version there. So we'll go to documents, select those. Oops, my bad. Go back and then go schools. So now I've gotten rid of my documents. I have only schools. I want to know how many schools have documents. I select here. I collapse up. It gets rid of everything but the first row of each of these matches and I can see that I have six schools look here at the status bar that had gender related items on their uh, IRB forms okay so I think that gives you a great um, overview of this window I am going to throw it out all right so um, obviously these links won't do anything now because there's no result window there. All right, so let's just quickly talk about the reports. Um, this first report will show you how many times codes were simultaneously applied to different passages of text. This gives you a rough count of the codes there. This does it by file. They present the results in a slightly different way. This is a straightforward word count. Basically, it will give you a concordance of your documents. Uh, there are two inter-rater reliabilities, um, Klippendorf's Kappa and Cohn's Alpha. Um, here is a report on how you have defined the codes you use. Let's see what that looks like. You want to see the definitions? Here you go. I've got definitions applied to all of the codes here and uh, I could copy and paste this, put it in Word and make it nice. Uh, I can also uh, look at code sets, like I said, groups of codes that I've put together. So for example, there's a vulnerable code set I have and here is those. I can either hide or show the definition and that is that. All right, other reports. Um, uh, 
There's a report of file tags because you can tag files as well as group them. Uh, there's a data table which goes to the results window, which is why it is um, there. The dog is going to bark crazily. The male has arrived. There you go. Data summary table is an advanced uh, way of counting codes and subcodes and results windows. Data comparison table, that's what this is over here. Co-occurrence table is kind of like co-coding frequency, but it's really um, about your context variables. And you can graph those, which means make kind of a concept map of them. You can graph code families. Let's take a look at that. It'll pop up in a second. This uses graphis.app, wonderful application. Um, unfortunately, right now, it's um, m the easiest form of it is still on the old um, PP, what was it, PPC or whatever the old uh, Apple processors were. So here we have a nice kind of chart of all the codes and subcodes, and you can see how things break down all the different levels there. Very nice. Um, and, uh, what else? So, it's, it's run through a separate program, but, like I said, graph this dot app. Uh, you can graph code sets to see which codes are in the code sets. You can graph file sets. You can graph hierarchical data. And, uh, you can connect sets to data. So lots of uh, reports and charts and tables to make sense of your data. Um, I've often described TAMS as manual drive versus automatic. And uh, you do have to kind of do the sorting and selecting yourself and winnow through data and read the data and recode the data. You can do things like sentence searches and paragraph searches. So if you wanted to code all paragraphs with the word blob in it, or blob or slime, you can do that. Um, it's a little tricky. Again, that uh, manual shift metaphor works. You have to make a results window of those paragraphs and then add code them with the recoding mechanism. I won't work on the details of that. You can read the documentation to find all of that out. So let's talk about the documentation for a second. I am going to go to the website and just walk you through it very briefly. Here's the TAMS website. What comes up is the Macintosh stuff. If you're a new step user, the very crusty old barely operating version of TAMS is over there. I don't even know if it works anymore. I don't have access to a Linux machine, unfortunately, at this point. At any rate, um, you can see screenshots, out-of-date screenshots from TAMS, from TAMS 3. We're now on TAMS 4. Things look a little different. The important thing is the download. And I just want to point out this. Most people get the single user application and basic documentation. There's a user manual and a tutorial there. That's not good enough for most people. You need to get the complete documentation, which has a whole bunch of wonderful comic books I've created to walk through very specific tasks and tabs. Get this. It's a huge package. Lots of details in there. So when you're done with the basic stuff, you really want to check this out. This has been Matthew Weinstein giving you a guided tour of TAMS. Thank you.